Welcome to the Market Me podcast with your host, Mike Mall. Each episode of Market Me deconstructs real campaigns for actual businesses to improve their marketing efforts. Mike is the founder of Social Media House and a digital marketing consultant who teaches marketing strategy to executives and their teams from small business to Fortune 500 companies. Let's get started. On this episode of the Market Me podcast, we're talking with Deepak Shukla, the CEO of Pearl Lemon. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Oh, Mike, thank you. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Looking forward to getting into it. So I've been following your content for, uh, for a decent amount of time. And, you know, uh, I've had interesting conversations around SEO because that's really your, the main focus of the agency. Tell yep. me a little bit about the, the landscape because, you know, you get people saying that they don't think it's, uh, it works amazing. It doesn't work. It's dying. What, what's your, cool. your thing? Obviously, you, it's, something's going well. <laughs> on it, but uh, <laughs> tell, tell me a little bit about the landscape of it right now. I think like anything, the, uh, when something is executed, not even imperfectly, but in absence of consistency, it's, 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 it's almost certain you're going to get a negligible result. So I think that by the same measure, I would probably meet people who would say, you know what, I don't think Facebook ads work, Deepak. I don't think that, you know, I think Twitter's a redundant platform. I think, you know, tell Donald Trump that Twitter's redundant, right? Tell any e-commerce brand that Facebook isn't where you should put your money into. So I think that that's where a lot of those worries that people have come from. The crazy or perhaps the more challenging thing with, with, with SEO is that, of course, there's a lag time. You know, the lead is that you spend money. The lag is the result. So it's, it's, it's very easy to have a trigger-happy finger but then really down the line get a little bit gun shy because we live in a I want it now and expect it now even if I say I'm happy to wait culture so mm-hmm. that means for the most part what I would say is that you know what if, if, if you need a short-term result then because your business demands it then I would say let's not start with SEO you will in two months probably just cancel your contract or start executing it improperly because your mind will go somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. And do you find, uh, obviously the more, in my opinion, the more holistic approach is kind of pairing it with some paid so that it's, it's all kind of feeding into the ecosystem. Sure. It's, it's a good question. So for Pearl Lemon, we, 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 we have done PPC for our own agency on and off with mostly negligible success for so so yes and it depends upon the business that you're in i think in my opinion if you're selling a high ticket product that's let's just say five hundred dollars plus then the return that you get from ads kind of is an inverse the more the more the high ticket your item the more difficult it's gonna be for someone to potentially make a first time purchase but your question was do they go together yes they do i think that one of the things that a buddy of mine, Ross Tavendale from Taipei Media says, he says that, you know, if I come across a business and they want to pay us for SEO, but they're not running PPC, I'm like, why do you want to do SEO if you're not doing PPC? You know, what, what is your expectation here? And a lot of people think that SEO is a different form of PPC. They're, they're, they're very, very powerful together. And I think that the only qualifying factor is, you know, what are you trying to achieve? For Pearl Lemon, you know, we want to, we, we sell, we have ticket prices that start from about 3000 well, 2, 000, about two and a half to 3,000 pounds a month and rising. So we don't do ads. We do do retargeting, but we don't do actual ads to find a first-time customer. So I think that they're the nuances. Um, but yeah, do they work together? If you're an e-commerce business, absolutely. If you're high ticket, just have a think carefully about what you're trying to achieve with it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you have a, a specific industry or a specific niche that tends to fall into the success bucket on your end? Or um, is, it, is it really just, you know, the, the competitiveness and, and the, the time period? I think that, so if we're talking about Pearl Lemon clients, so our, our business now is about 90% inbound. So the truth is, is that we'll take the work that comes in that meets our pre-qualifying criteria. So we get, you know, we've got um, maintenance support companies. We've got logistics and courier companies. We've got uh, e-commerce luxury brands. So we've got a whole host. 
of that, I think that the, the people that tend to do well are, I mean, domains that have got a bit of history behind them. When you're starting out new in any space, there's, there's a learning curve or there's an adjustment period. And, and that, I think, is something we need to sometimes educate clients more about. So if you're asking, I mean, to, to be direct, I think if people want to know which industries work best for SEO, it's, 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 there isn't one particularly. It's really just a matter of the competition. What it, how, you know, how, how competitive, you know, if you're in the luxury e-commerce space, maybe you're competing with, I don't know, made.com and, and, and Alibaba and Amazon, then you have to, you know, play it a bit differently. But, but if you're in a space, for example, such as you're, 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 you know, you're selling something that's particularly niche, like, you know, lawnmower replacement parts, and you're specifically focused upon lawnmowers, maybe you can do really damn well without, without a lot of work. So it becomes quite context specific. But broadly, you know, the less sophisticated your comp competition is, the better you're going to do. That's, that's the, you know, a good example of it. Practically, we have two businesses. Uh, well, we have two websites under one umbrella, Pearl Lemon and Pearl Lemon Leads. We've had to do one fifth of the work on Pearl Lemon Leads to achieve the same results for Pearl Lemon because we're trying to rank for keywords such as lead generation agency or lead generation companies because our competition aren't really doing SEO. Our right. results have been so much more fruitful than mm -hmm. us trying, for example, to rank for SEO agency London, which, you know, we're number 10 at the moment and that's taken us two years and mm -hmm. to crack top three, it might take us another two years. Lead generation agency or rather, for example, cold calling agency, it took us about three months to get to number one. And then it was like, oh, wow, that took us about three to $5,000 worth of work. And now we're generating that on a monthly basis. This is fantastic. Why didn't I do it before? So we still learn almost by accident at how quickly some things rank and how badly other things take or need. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, and you said, you know, you said a little bit about cold calling and I, I you know, I, I emailed you offline because, you know, I think, uh, I, I think some of my audience will probably be in the same bucket of people that follow you. And I've personally watched you on Facebook live cold calling. And I just like, it's so awesome. I'm so terrible at it. Um, closing sales fine, uh, but yeah. cold calling is just awful. But I do think, uh, I do think it's a really, um, underutilized method because I think everybody's in this mindset. Like I have to create this funnel and I have mm. to catch them on Instagram and then they have mm. to come on YouTube. And it's like, yeah, but you could also just have a conversation with somebody, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I, I think um, I, you're probably the most effective and efficient person I've seen. So I, ha I have some questions for you for yeah, somebody sure. who might be, um, you know, thinking about trying it themselves yeah. um, and, and maybe some ways that they can get into it. So we'll start with this. I think one of the things, and I've done a lot of cold calling as well, but I'm curious from your perspective, how do you get yourself ready to call or to start calling on a given period? Well, you're right. I mean, it, it is scary. It doesn't, it doesn't stop being scary, but I think you need to, I mean, it's really important to, you know, you, you hear a lot about it, like in, in, in NLP, you have to prime yourself to call and whatever priming is for one person, whether it's getting the oxygen flowing, you know, get, get kind of the adrenaline kind of moving through your body or whether it's literally, you know, sometimes I go into the bathroom and I'll just have a bit of a scream being like, yeehaw, let's do this. Beat my chest. Real, it's, it's a real caveman thing. Whatever gets ultimately the adrenaline pumping and then you make a call. So, 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 so that for me, initiates the kind of fight or flight response so it's 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 really activating our kind of parasympathetic nervous system so that we get into that stage where a little bit of adrenaline and cortisol is flowing and you're like right i'm about to go to war and i've burnt my bridges and let's do this so whatever the psychology is that leads up to that and then it's like right let's dial let's dial and 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 just trying to defeat the you know, we've got, we've got this big monkey mind that's like, oh, okay, I could, I could do this. I could, I could, you know, I could, I could, I could email Mike. I could, I could just maybe Facebook him. I could, I could, but you know what? If, 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 if you found Mike's phone number, just, you should just call him. And if you just create a really great impression in the first 15 seconds of a phone call, smart people will make time for people that they find impressive. You're like, you know what? I don't, I don't need SEO, but this, there's something about this guy. I'm going to listen to his pitch anyway. Fuck it. Let me just have a listen, see what he's got to say. And, and for most of the time, that's what 
I find happens with, with if you get through to decision makers that, that, that you can do. Certainly that's what works for me. And, and, and you know, I, I, I encourage everybody, you know, prime yourself and, 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 and just realize that it's, it's, it's that first 15, 10 to 15 seconds. You have to demonstrate competency, confidence, and even possibly a little bit, little bit of humor or, or self-realization. And, and you can demonstrate that all in the first 10 to 15 seconds. Nervousness is the enemy. No matter how you feel, you cannot demonstrate that because otherwise anyone else who's bullish on the phone is just going to kind of send you back to where you came from. Yeah. Yeah. Well, perfect. That, so that leads perfectly into the next question. You know, it was a little bit different, but, but I think you've contextualized it well. How do you how do you specifically, or how would somebody dominate the first 15 seconds? Are there kind of three key ingredients? Yeah. You mentioned yeah. humor, you mentioned confidence. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that a lot of it comes from understanding tonality of the person who picks up the phone. So you get the, 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 the busy person, you get the kind of cold call proof person, and then you get the person who's probably got a lot of time on their hands. The person who's got a lot of time in their hands probably has the least money, typically. That's how it tends to work. The other two are the interesting people. So what I'll often gauge for is the way that you respond to my hello. Um, hey, hey, could I speak to Mike Moore, please? Yeah, it's Mike. Can I help? Defensive. When you're defensive, I then renege and be very honest. I say, hey, Mike, look, I know you're a busy guy. I am a salesperson. I'd love to pitch you for 15 seconds. Can I just tell you what I do? You can determine whether it's interesting to you and we can either continue the call or I'll call that later or, you know, that's it. How does that sound? Most people say, okay, fair enough. And I determine that by the, hi, yeah, it's Mike. Can I help? Rather than the, Hey, yeah, it's Mike. Um, what can I do for you? That's, uh, I'm a little bit hesitant, but I've got, I've got some time. I will listen to your pitch. I'll, I'll listen. Hey, Mike, listen, my name's Deepak. Thank you so much for taking my call. So look, I'm, 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 on, your, I'm on your website right now. I'm, I'm on mikemull.com. And being honest, I represent, you know, and maybe I wouldn't even say being honest because it's defensive, but, but I, I do make a judgment based upon tonality of how the person responds. And that will tell me a little bit about your framework. So I think, I think context is the most important thing and matching and mirroring the, the, the way in which you find someone. And then based upon that, you can kind of pivot and adjust. Got it. And, and I think content wise, when we're thinking about making a great intro, it's kind of that. I mean, hi, introduce, thanks for taking my call are the two things I picked up. And then do yeah. you, do you always say, Hey, I, like, I'm just going to be up front. I'm, I'm in sales. I'm calling to pitch you. I'd love to, did like, you always pitch the 15 second pitch or do you actually waver depending on how they answer? I, I, I actually, so there's different methodologies. Of course, people try and, you know, if you, if you listen to the Cardones or the Belforts or the, there's, you know, there's a Zig Ziglar, um, whoever it might be, you know, that, that, that you listen to in terms of your sales methodology, I, I, I am, I, I take a kind of straight. So, so I think that if you can create the irresistible offer, so I open with the irresistible offer. So my, the irresistible offer might be, look, hey, Mike, it's Deepak here from Pearl Lemon. Look, I work and represent a really interesting bunch of interviewees who I think would be amazing potentially for your podcast. They've all got pretty big followings themselves. The last guy that we booked has 27,000 followers, which he ended up promoting to his audience. If I was able to get you guests who had active, engaged Instagram audiences, would that be interesting to your podcast? That was probably 17 seconds. If you create an offer that's stupid to say no to, most people most of the time would say, okay, sound, maybe it does sound like rubbish, but I am going to listen to the rest of the pitch. Um, so that's the approach that I tend to take because I think that it's, it's very direct, it's very clear, and it, it, it's, it's, it's really quite straight line, I think. It, 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 there's an honesty to it. And you know, from, from my opinion, if you focus on the irresistible offer and then work it, so if we try it again now and I try and improve my tonality, Hey Mike, it's Deepak here from Pearl Lemon. Look, buddy, I, I'm looking at your podcast on iTunes now. 
I really, really like episode number 27. And I'm reaching out to you because I represent an agency that works with influencers. What we do is we get influencers who've got followings of at least 10,000 people and we book them onto podcasts like yourselves. If I could get you influencers on a weekly basis that had 10,000 followers plus, would that be interesting for your podcast? So I've improved it again by working through the tonality, adding some pauses. And then I think you refine that elevator pitch and then, and then you, you open up ultimately a door that might be closed to then maybe talking more about the brand, the business, et cetera. But for me, the, the biggest thing is, is that open because that's the inertia that most people have. And then closing, once you've got someone's interest, is, is, is probably easier to do. So I think the fearfulness for most people with cold calling is that first 30 seconds when you're like, oh shit, you know, is this guy going to tell me, tell me to piss off basically or hang up? Probably, unless you nail your elevator pitch. Right. Interesting. I love that. Um, so then, yeah, I mean, that brings me to my, my next kind of thing where, you know, I've been in sales a really long time. It's a game of numbers, knowing your numbers. What would you say is your kind of the breakdown, that, the KPIs that you follow of like, you know, calls to uh, calls to appointments to or however you yeah. structure? Do you have a sense for yourself? Um, how, how you kind of lay that out? Yeah, sure. So it depends upon the nature. If it's if it's really straight cold, cold calling where you're, the, the challenge is to get through to the decision maker, then, you know, based upon, for example, a, a eight hour day, you work in sprints, you do maybe 60 minutes of calling, you break 60 minutes of calling break. The idea ultimately, at the, the, that's a case of, of course, the follow up. Um, and in those instances, we'll do something along the lines of, the, the general aim is trying to aim for one appointment an hour, which is a lot of the time not feasible because you spend maybe an hour trying to get through to the right person. And, and some of it's kind of investigative work. You're like, oh, hey, can I, can I speak to Mike Malt? This is Tracy. Uh, Mike's busy right now, whatever it might be. And they're like, oh, hey, Tracy. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm a really huge fan of, you know, and, and, and you kind of have to understand every, every industry has a nuance, of course. So I, 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 broadly, I aim for one appointment an hour mostly when it's straight cold calling, it doesn't happen. It ends up being probably, you know, two to three solid appointments a day if you can get them, or if you can get out one really good pitch a day, depending upon the industry, then that's great. If it's part of an account-based sales approach where you're doing, for example, LinkedIn, email, then call, then maybe you can up the volume. Or if you scrape LinkedIn and get people's phone numbers, their mobile numbers, then you increase your kind of actual return and ROI, then you can achieve the, you know, one appointment an hour scenario. Because if I've got 10 mobile phone, phone numbers, I'll call 10 guys and I'll get an appointment from one of them. Because if you nail the opening, so I think that that's, they're the nuances I'd go for. For a day, if it's straight cold calling, and then you can get, you know, up to eight appointments, one every hour, if you've got mobile phone numbers, that's, that's like, a, of course, a big difference. Got it. Got it. And then, so there's the inevitable argument, and I like to tackle this because I hate when people have excuses. Well, Deepak, you're an experienced, charming guy. Da, 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 da. You can do it. Of course you can do it. What would you say are some of the, the myths or some of the big like, arguments to not do it where you're like, you have a good counter? Or like, what are the mis some of the misconceptions you would say? from? You've probably had people tell you, no, no, I can't. I can't call, yeah. I can't do it. What are some of the big things that people get stuck on um, in, in trying to get into it? Uh, absolutely. Um, no, I think that, I mean, it's natural to be scared of it. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we don't, we don't do deal very well, do, we don't deal very well with rejection, a lot of us, and, and, and that requires a certain still. So I'd say for, for some people, you know what, if, if you really, really don't want to do it, I, I'd actually say then don't do it because you're going you're gonna to fail hour three. And that means that you're probably a bad fit. However, if someone really, you know, is, is wavering and it's just a matter of ultimately trying to kind of get over themselves, I think it's about, it's, it's about quietening the, the, the kind of conscious mind. A lot of people can just, you know, that monkey mind can talk yourself out of it. Your, your heart's racing a little bit. So there's, there's uh, practically speaking, I think that, you know, if, if you're listening and you're like, oh, Deepak, you know, I'm scared of cold calling. I've never done cold calling. I tried, had a really bad experience. Then I think that you try again, but you try every time differently. And, and that's what most people probably don't do. 
they try once and then they try again. So trying differently, and there's many variations of it, get a cold calling coach to actually sit with you or go to, go to Mike and do cold calling together or go on Facebook Live and cold call. So it's really, I think, about making a list of different ways to execute, to achieve the same result. You know, cold calling absolutely can work. Cold calling, people will say, is less valuable today because there's so many other ways to contact people. But cold calling is becoming more novel because, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, landlines are virtual PAs or people have a voicemail only or there's like a whole redirect thing going on. But, you know, you can still, I can still grab a lot of people's numbers from LinkedIn and I could just, I could just WhatsApp the guy, you know, which we've done sometimes. We do, you know, WhatsApp blast now and again and we just voice note a bunch of people, see what happens. Um, so I think that it's, it's, it's about trying differently. The biggest thing is that, yeah, it didn't work first time. Try differently. Try differently. And, and make sure you try differently at least three times. And whether that's with you, whether that's in a different room, whether that's going to a Tony, listening to a Tony Robbins webinar or listening to Jordan Belfort talk about it and then kind of jumping on the phone. But, but the biggest problem, of course, people have is sticking with it because it's, it, is, it is tough. But, 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 but you know, there's, 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 there's no, it's not a coincidence that, you know, some of the best businesses, you know, I think that, is it um, Russell, Russell Bronson click? Click funnels. He started out as a door-to-door salesman, as a Mormon, talking about you know, um, I think selling perhaps you know, Christy, you know, there's 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 so many examples in in you know Zig Ziglar, I think Brian Tracy. These guys started out as cult sales guys, and then they became these huge speakers. So I think it does require a certain level of grit. But can the grit be learned? Yeah, sure. I think you just need to try differently. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because I'm finding in the conversations that I'm having is it's almost more imperative now than ever. So many people are, are, you know, making the decision or being told that they're not going to be working at a company as a full-time employee anymore, right? Like yeah. it's the state of the world, that freelance independent contractor yeah. thing is, is big. And when you're there, you're the head of the business, whether yeah. it's reluctant head or not. And so yeah. I think thinking about these skills and like diving in and finding whatever your approach or your way to get in touch with people. Um, you know, I think it's really important. That's why I like having these conversations for myself. I send video messages, messages on LinkedIn. Yeah, I send full video, like one and a half minute videos and I send a hundred a week and I get into a wow. lot of sales conversations, right? But it's a, it takes a lot of time yeah, similar to yeah. calling, but the impact of like, Holy shit, you sent me a video specifically yeah. me. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. There you go. No it's, one else is doing it. It's the novelty factor that can work, you know. I think that these days cold calling probably is gonna become more novel. You know, I'm always impressed when someone manages to find my mobile number, which which isn't that hard. You can scrape my LinkedIn profile and it's there and people call me, you know, and I think that you're completely right. So, you know, the the novelty factor is 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 really, you know, a, a big thing. What's the most interesting thing? product or service that you purchased being cold called? I had a guy who cold called me about lead generation from Craigslist. And he was like, oh, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll send you leads on autopilot via Craigslist. What do you think? So he, he pitched me. We, we connected on LinkedIn. I, I don't manage my own LinkedIn. Right. So one of my team manages my <laughs> LinkedIn. So, I, I mean, as I discovered, then he got my number and he was like, oh, dude, he didn't. But, but, but it was interesting. It was, it was like, hey, Deepak, it's, 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 it's Michael here from LinkedIn. We're connected there. I wanted to give you a call and just to, to, to very quickly introduce myself and to just talk to you a little bit about something I think, you know, you might be interested in. And I was like, okay, okay, Mike. This, um, okay, okay. What was his name? Josh, I think. Okay, Josh, this is a sales pitch. Okay, fine. You know, you got my number. Hit me. He's like, brilliant. I'm going to, what, you know, uh, I can, I, you know, and it was very straight. It was like, you know, I'd love to show you how I can generate leads via uh, Craigslist. It'll cost you $50 for a three-day trial. And then if you like it, I'm going to charge you a lot more. What do you say? And I was like, all right, 50 bucks, fuck it. Is that out? It was, and, and, then, and then he said, okay, great. Um, are you happy to take payment right now? Do you want to hear more about it? I was like, I do want to hear more about it. But I am happy to, I'm impressed that you called me and that your picture is quite clear. I said, can we do it by PayPal? Because I'll do a chargeback if it's no good. Maybe mm. I will, maybe I won't. And he's like, yeah, it's fine. Of course, no problem. Mm. So it was, it, was, it was very, this, this is my offer. And, and um, I was impressed by that. And 
then the methodology was was really quite cool actually um and then you know i ended up paying him maybe like 500 five five six hundred dollars a month um not a huge amount at all but but his his pitch was very direct and it was unusual as well i'd never been pitched on lead generation from craigslist i was like craigslist yeah. is where all of the crap goes yeah um <laughs> but, but you know he was like look i'd love to send you leads via craigslist my last client won a fifteen thousand dollar advertising contract via craigslist i've got a 72 hour offer it's 50 dollars. i'll do it for three days for you and i'm convinced that at the end of those three days we'll speak again and i'll be able to upsell you what do you right. think and i was like okay so so he had a very nice teaser entry level offer and then the 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 the, the value changed dramatically so i mean arguably anyway that was the most interesting cool. pitch that i've been pitched about <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. I've, I'm always, I'm always curious because there's so many funny stories around that. Yeah, but uh, yeah. anyway, really appreciate your time. Appreciate your expertise. I know a lot of people are going to get a ton of value from this. Uh, where should people go follow you? I'll, I'll link all this up in the show notes, but if they want to connect with, if they yeah. are in need of kind of that SEO or lead services from the brand side, and then, and then where are you most, um, you know, accessible on the internet? I know you're pretty, uh, pretty vocal out there. So. Yeah, sure. So if you guys, if you want to hire us for SEO or for lead generation, just go to Pearl Lemon, pearllemon.com or Google it. If, if we've done a half a job, you'll find us. <laughs> if you want to talk to me, then you would do well probably getting in contact with me via Facebook. Although my Facebook is also managed, I do still check it and uh, I, will, I will respond to people that have something cool to say. So if you want me, Facebook, if you want to hire us and go to Pearl Lemon. Beautiful. All right, man. Really appreciate the time today. Thank you. Mike, thank you.